All right guys, so today we're gonna to be talking plate carriers. I got my buddy Lee from Barely Training. If you guys haven't watched recently, he also did a video with me on chest rigs and battle belts. So I thought it'd be cool to do another video on plate carriers. Stay tuned for another video coming soon on helmet setups, that's another story. I thought it'd be cool just to have Lee out here kind of go over different options for plate carriers, why he set his up the way he did, and just some pro tips for you guys that are looking to get kit for yourself or maybe some of you guys that just want to upgrade your kit or if you have any questions at all. So I'm going to go ahead and let Lee kind of introduce himself and go over his carriers and his setups again, why he set them up the way he did. But uh, with that being said, Lee, if you don't mind, like I said, just kind of let him know why you set these up and give him a little introduction. Sure. Appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. Hey guys, I'm Lee with Barely Training Company in San Diego, California, barelytraining.com. That's B-E-A-R-L-Y training.com. Going over some plate carriers here. I got three obviously very different colors, obviously very different setups, and I'm gonna go through why each fits its niche. I personally have a lot of plate carriers and I have each one for a specific purpose. I don't feel that one plate carrier really solves all problems. I don't feel that way about guns, belts, helmets, whatever. So I have multiples of each. Don't get me wrong, I didn't buy multiples of each all the first day. This is stuff that I've collected throughout time and it's just been accumulating because I have different things that I'm setting up for. So that being said, I'm gonna start here with probably the quickest one. This is actually a plate carrier from a company that unfortunately no longer exists anymore. It's called Fenrir. I talked to the owner of Fenrir today. He said that this is kind of a blend of the West Coast armor and the Ferro Concepts plate carrier. So if you wanna try going either one of those directions, you're probably gonna get the same sort of setup. So this is again a Fenrir, but just the carrier's Fenrir. So there's different things in here. One thing that I'll point out in the beginning, as I'm running these bad boys, these are called pontoons. This is a really cool feature that you set up like this so it runs airflow through your body. You can set them on the front and back just to get that sweaty, heavy rig off your chest sometimes. It does help a little bit just to kind of alleviate that heat. And there are plates that you can get that you fill with water and freeze that keep you really cool if you run hot. I don't run that hot, so I'm good. So let's move on here. This is a mag pouch by Bees combat i like this one a lot because the mag comes in out super fast you just stick it in pull it out there's no extra weight here there's no extra bulk here because if you are going prone that extra bulk here causes your back to flay out and it just it's a really uncomfortable i've done it with this one it's doable but it's not comfortable and i like this because it literally is just a, an entire flap that attaches cool part about it is is it comes actually attached to this flap. So it kind of encompasses everything. I got my chem light, got a Sharpie for target marking and the tourniquet all in this flap. Pretty cool. To go further into bees, this is their mini dangler, which I like because sometimes you don't need a whole lot of stuff in there. I got headlamp, which is key in any kind of night class, low light class, night vision class, you need a headlamp. Make sure your headlamp also has a red setting so you don't have to go blowing out people's night vision. I got an IR chem light, a multi-tool, handcuffs and energy that's always good especially if you're training all day and combat shears you never know what you're gonna need to do if we spin it around to the back back here we have a bunch of different brands so these are javelin concepts mag pouches i like them because they're the new version expandable with the elastic on the side so that means i can put mags here i can put smoke grenades i can put flashbangs i can put whatever i need this pocket isn't really designed for me it's more designed for my buddy behind me i like that instead of going with like a specific pouch because this is more all-encompassing this is spiritus systems i like this because it's kind of just like the small backpack i don't really need a huge backpack but this is just enough to give me whatever i need throw that in there and again i can't get this out but i can say hey buddy do me a favor grab my water bottle from the back again this is not a mission specific plate carrier this is more of a training day plate carrier where i can just throw stuff in there camelbacks are more mission specific that's pretty cool pouch. It's like I said, it's like a mini backpack just for whatever you might need. So this is an addition that I added just recently. It's actually an extra mag pouch, well, two of them technically, and the mags run horizontal so that I can reach around, pull that mag out. So as you can see in the front, I had three mags plus these two back here, which is five, plus these two, which is seven. I might be like a little obsessed with that number. Is that a hook and loop? So this just Velcros in. Velcro. It, it's kind of like the, uh, the danglers in the front. It just Velcros right in. And so you can literally drop it on any plate carrier that has that open back connection. Who makes the uh, pouch in the back for the extra mag? This is Mayflower. 
Yeah, this one's kind of expensive, but it's pretty cool. I like to add that extra couple mags. This is a really cool knife. This is a Greg Moffitt knife. This is a really cool knife. It's small and slim. I don't need a Rambo knife on a plate carrier that's set up just for training. Having a knife is helpful. Mostly, honestly, I just cut open ammo bags with my knife. Um, you yeah, so it's in a Kydex sheath back there. I can get it out pretty quickly. I really like this one just because of the size. And as I've mentioned before, that ring or that hook, I like to just, you know, whoop, there we go. You just Velcro it in, throw Velcro on both sides, and you're good to go. I do run 3A plates in this, so those are lightweight plates. This one, which we'll go to next, is running level four plates. So just kind of go down the plate road right now. 3A plates are pistol, four are rifle, and then you have like, four plus and uh, it just gets confusing. I know it's crazy, but just remember three A and four. That's really kind of all you really need to remember. Three A is pistol, four is rifle, and then you have four special threat, blah, blah, blah. Um, some really good plates that I run. In fact, these both are running West Coast Armor plates. You can just go to their website, westcoastarmor.com. Buy the plates, they'll ship them straight to your house. I like them because they're ultra light and durable. I've personally shot the pistol plates with rifle rounds and it stopped it. They don't claim that because they can't legally, but I claim it. I've seen it happen in person and it stopped a 5.56 five, round. Are those ceramics? No, they're space age. I don't know, a bunch of big words that I don't understand. So they're lighter than steel though? Oh yeah, night and day lighter than steel. Like this plate here weighs almost nothing. And even their heavy rifle plates are still not heavy. Their rifle plates are probably still lighter than steel. One more question. So I have level three A plus. Mm -hmm. I claim to stop five, five, six. And so that's when you get into kind of like the semantics, like three A plus versus three A plus versus four versus four plus versus three A special threat. There's all kinds of different semantics out there. I would just really research your company. I literally have shot these plates myself without West Coast Armor being there on the range and seen it stop when it stopped. Five, seven, nine mil, 45, 10, five, five, six, and 22 all of those in the same exact plate. All right guys, so now we're gonna finish that one and go on to this one. This one you can see is M81, God's Plaid it's called. It is not a great camo to be honest with you. Like for the use of camouflage, it's just not a great camo. I live in Southern California. You can see this is desert, this is not, but I love it. This to start with is the Bees Combat Plate Carrier. I went around the internet and I scoured and scoured and scoured looking for an N81 plate carrier. Couldn't find one. I found like three or four companies that made one. I ordered one from Canada, to be honest. It took them six weeks to even like send me an email. Said, screw it, cancel that. And got these bees out of Utah. Super happy with it. Came pretty quick. They make great stuff. As I mentioned earlier, this is bees as well. So that's the plate carrier itself. It is running heavy plates. It is running the level four plates, which are rifle rated. This is kind of more of a hunker down plate carrier than it is like a training or a get home plate carrier. Continuing with the M81 theme, this, this, and this are from Haley Strategic. They did a launch of M81 a couple years ago and they did it like a day and that was it. These are pretty much unobtainium. You can still get the same stuff, just not in M81. You can still get it in Arid, Multicam, Coyote. Part of it, it is a chest rig, so I'm running the mag pouches back here. I took the Haley ones out, the Kydex ones. I'm not a huge fan of those because they make it so bulky out forward. These are elastic, much like these, and I have the addition of these to hold those mags in, so they're real secure. I put a flashlight and a multi-tool. Inside this, I have some cool stuff here. I got face covering. I got a really cool little headlamp. This thing is waterproof as it sits. Pull it out and it's just a tiny little headlamp. This one is really cool. It's by Petzl. It's tiny. You can set it to either red or white and you can send it to the first setting that you turn on to is red or white. That's pretty crucial when you're running anything at night. Next, my sugar, my IR chem light, which I protect. Sport beans, which give me that energy. They're actually just jelly beans with caffeine in them. So they make it kind of tasty. And then this is pretty cool. A lot of you run combat shears. This is kind of a neat way to do it. They fold up. They are more expensive than your traditional ones, but they work really, really well for tucking them away. I like them because again, that whole combat shear size is kind of a little bit of pain in the ass, but this tucks away pretty nice. So that's it in that. Again, I'm running this and this kind of a separate independent of the plate carrier itself because this can come off and be a chest rig. Going on to the dangler pouch. Oh, one thing I didn't want to mention is I set up all my zippers to be one direction. As you can see, there's a Haley part right here that has the zipper to be universal in direction, but I took that off. So I know open is always to the right, closed is always to the left. Did the same thing with this one. 
open, it has one zipper thing. So open it to the right, close it to the left. Always gonna run it that way. That's your traditional zipper direction. So my brain automatically knows for that. If I'm going here to try and open it and the zipper's over here, it's gonna screw me up. So this is set up a little bit differently. So I have everything in bags. I have the buzzsaw the glow stick bus style that we've seen earlier in a previous video. These are really cool because the glow stick inside is protected by this and it has the rope to run it. Got a little bit of additional 550. Got my candy, a little tiny multi-tool just because you never know. And then this is kind of an interesting thing. This is an earpiece for a Baofeng. I'll get into the radios a little bit later, but this is an independent of this system because like I said, this can pull off and it'd be its own rig. So I may need to run something different than what's running here. So that's kind of a cool feature. Baofengs actually come with this. Just bag it up and throw it in somewhere. Don't throw it in the trash because it can become helpful, especially if you're just running a chest rig. These are real simple. You're not running comms, you're not running a helmet, all that stuff. So one thing I did want to come to is the Haley, just like the bees, they do have these open tourniquet holders, which work really well. However, I'm personally, a, a, just trying to get away from the open. As you can see, this is exposed to not only the sun, but the elements, the dirt, the whatever I'm rolling around in. So it does tend to wear out your tourniquets and you always wanna keep your tourniquets nice. So I'm personally switching over to ones that are solidly covered. They're not harder, they're not slower, they're just different. You just gotta learn it. So on this plate here, I do have some gloves. These are not necessarily shooting gloves, but they are in God's plaid. I bought these not only to go with this, but more of like a protect your hands sort of glove than it is a shooting glove because it's a little bit thicker. These are mechanics. These are not the thin mechanics. These are probably your more traditional mechanics. They're a little bit thicker to protect the hands more. If I was gonna shoot with them, I'd probably chop off the finger to add a little bit more dexterity to my trigger and my controls. But these are just hand protection gloves. You know, it's always good to have a set, especially you never know. This is just a standard carabiner. This is a night eyes one. As you can see over here, I'm running like a plastic one with a lock, but they're still pretty easy. The Carabiners, guys, don't cheap out on carabiners. Don't buy the 99 cent store ones. Don't buy the cheapest, crappiest ones at Home Depot. Get decent ones, because you never know what you're gonna be hanging off this. I've definitely, especially off this one, hung $1,000 Ear Pro. Do I want that 99 cent carabiner to drop my $1,000 contacts? No, I really, really do not. So kind of go with good carabiners. You don't have to go with the super crazy REI ones that'll hold a truck. Just something that is you know, strong enough and has a reputable name behind it. So that's this one. This, Like I said, this is kind of a more stationary plate carrier. I don't think I mentioned the plates in this. I'm running the level four plates, which are rifle plates. I run West Coast Armor in all three of these plate carriers. I have run these plates four. They're heavy, they're bulky, they're awesome, they work. This is a little bit lighter situation. I have literally shot this with a rifle with 5.56 and it stopped it. So I'm totally confident in running level three A plates in this and this is level four. So these will actually stop rifle rounds guaranteed from the factory. Get into a standard sappy cut, a standard shooter's cut, something like that. You don't wanna go swimmer because it cuts in a lot. It's meant for those overarm strokes. You don't wanna go anything square because most plate carriers are not built to have that square back here. Something to keep in mind, the rifle ones are thicker. So if you have a small plate carrier. I know getting my rifle ones in a cry precision plate carrier was actually pretty difficult. I had to like spend a good 45 minutes getting each plate in because it's such a tight squeeze. Pick the plates that are right for you. If you're honestly going to sit at home and use your plate carrier, sure, the couch is a great place to run level four plates. If you're going to be running around, running and gunning, training day, level 3A is kind of where I live. So all my plate carriers have plates. I know that's crazy to say an enormous amount of money. Yes, it's true, but I didn't buy them all at one time. I bought this plate carrier. I set up this plate carrier. I spent the money to get this plate carrier set up. Maybe a year or two later, I started a new one. Maybe a year or two later. So it's not like I rolled out all once, bought everything on the planet. On the back panel on your woodland, are you running that stream or you have a- Oh, okay, yeah. You're that so plate? because this is more of a stationary plate carrier, I don't run anything back here because I will have access to water, food, essentials that I will need. This is more of a stationary. I wouldn't travel with this one very much. So I'm just running that slick as opposed to this one where I'm running different kinds of pockets and mag pouches and backpack type stuff. It looks like you're running the pontoons on that one as well. Can you let them know, are those a certain brand? Is that just the name of the style? Uh, so pontoon, if you find any plate carrier pontoon, it'll work as long as they're Velcro in. I actually took the same set that was from here. It comes with four pontoons from bees. And I ran two of them in here and two of them here. To be honest, if my chest gets sweaty, it bothers me. If my back gets sweaty, it doesn't really bother me. Everyone sat in a car for a long period of time, you get a sweaty back. It doesn't bother me as much as my chest getting all gross and sweaty. So I run two in front, two in front, but it was one set that I had to buy. So just kind of think about what you want to do. Plate here like this, if you're running around outside with a level four plates, probably run pontoons on all four of them. 
So that's pretty much this plate carrier, but I'm gonna go into something now that these two both share, and that's the radio systems. As you can see, I'm running these guys right here. These are push to talks. So my headset will actually plug down into this. This runs to my radio. So if I just push this, it opens the mic so I can talk. I don't have to actually find my radio. And you can see on both these plate carriers, the radio is tucked away pretty cleanly because realistically, you're out with the boys, you're running a mission, whatever you're doing, I don't care. You set it to one channel and you forget it. You say, hey, guys, we're running two, whatever, set it, turn it on, and then it's all from here from now on. I wouldn't really worry about where you put the radio so much as long as you can access it if you need to, but it doesn't need to be a quick access. The wires you can see, you can see wires kind of running all over the place. That is a problem. Cable management is real. Depending on how long your wires are, depending where you're running your antenna, it all exists. There's so many cables running through these. As you can see, both of them are running antennas as well got this one back here. So that wire comes through here. This wire goes around that side to attach to this. It really depends on, like I said, the length of cable you're running and where you want to run your antenna. You notice these are on two separate sides. This cable was shorter than this cable. So I ate up more cable running it to this side than I did on this side. I do want to go back and mention that these are Amazon ones. The Disco 32s are legit and you do not have to mess with them. The Amazon ones, I found that you're kind of a 50-50 mix. Some of them will not work. You'll have to open it up, switch wires, resolder it, and close it back up to get it to work, which is a huge pain in the butt if you don't know what you're doing, or even if you do know what you're doing, it's still a pain in the butt. The Disco 32s will work right off the bat. The problem is I have how many plate carriers and to buy Disco 32s for all of them. Couldn't really do that, but I do have time right now, so I did have the time to go in and fix the Amazon ones. Disco 32, I also want to mention, has a soft antennas that just can kind of coil up around the back so you don't have these sticking out. These honestly don't bother me in the back. I'm not running backpacks on either one of these plate carriers, so these don't bother me, but the Disco 32 coil soft antennas are pretty legit. I will admit that. I did kind of mention the radio equipment I have in here because if I do separate this, I can still run something. And those are just, like I said, the thing that come with the Baofeng has a little button. Same concept, but now I'm running my headset to my push to talk to my radio, all in kind of where I'm at instead of running it as an independent package. Just for the FUDs out there that are like, oh, but you're running a Baofeng, those are cheap. They still work, right? For Oh yeah, 100%. Like a Baofeng works, and especially if you're gonna outfit multiple kits. I like to have kits as a standalone kit, so I don't wanna be switching radio constantly. If I bought real ICOM radios, those things are crazy expensive. And to bury it in a kit like this and leave it there, I do not have that kind of money. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Baofengs for what I do work. If you have one of those high speed radios, cool, that's great. Use that one as like a handheld or something you can attach to different things. And like I said, both these are running those Baofengs. Kind of a cool setup. It's easy, it's cheap, and it works. So yeah, these are the two kind of like specific ones that, you know, this is a stay home, this is a training. And this one in particular is a get home kit. That's why it's in the bag. This is a Haley Strategic knockoff bag. I do have the real version of this bag, but I bought this plate carrier specifically to stay in this bag. So think of this bag as a Tupperware. Just keeps the plate carrier set, everything. Nothing falls off, nothing falls out because this one is loaded. So as I say that, let me get into this. That one folds open just like that and we have plate carrier. So easy, pops right out. And now I have my plate carrier. So let me just go into the color. Obviously it's very different. The color on this is designed more to be a get home color. I didn't want to go full black because it's just a little too mall cop for me. I went with a multicam black because it does break up a little bit. And if you're wearing black, I wear black t-shirts a lot. I wear jackets a lot. Kind of just blends into what I normally do. You roll down the street wearing something like this, it's very, very obvious. You roll down the street something like this with a black shirt, maybe a zip up. It's gonna blend in a little bit more. But to go into the actual brand of plate care, this is an LBX, which is the sister company of LBT. The LBT is more the military driven side. The LBX is more kind of the civilian driven side. The only thing I really do not like about this brand LBX is all their parts are proprietary. As far as front panels and back panels, it's a proprietary system. So you gotta buy the panels to buy it correctly. I do really like it though, so it, it's okay with me. I bought this setup just to be dedicated to one thing. I'm not gonna be switching like this where I can pull that off and on. This is set up, this stays this way. I'm running rifle mags on here. These are ready to go rifle mags, as you can see. In fact, this mag is pretty awesome. This is an ETS mag that actually has a dot of tritium in there 
And that dot of tritium, what it does is it allows me to see the status of my mags. I know some mag poles have the window on the side, but even in the dark, that window is kind of hard to see. But this tritium glows through the magazine itself so I can see the change in rounds as I use that. So if I have a full mag, and again, this is my last mag. So if I have my last mag out and I have a full mag, cover fire of three or four rounds could be a thing. If I have a half mag or even less, cover fire is probably not an option. I probably want to take one well-aimed shot. So that's kind of the way I run this mag, where these two I know I have reserves, but this is like, hey, this is it, pay attention. So I like that mag a lot for this application. The knife, this is a Cricut knife. This is made by Williams Design. I like this knife a lot, but it is not your average person's knife. Because of the way it's designed, you can slide off like this and cut your hand. If you're not using it correctly, this knife is more designed to be a stab knife. And that comes from the whole Williams Design collection. He has a whole fighting art way of using knives. I like it a lot because it does go into one row of molly there and attaches quite nicely. Externally, let's get into the inside now. Inside here, I am running a multi-tool, which are great because now this encumples multiple tools, right? I got my knife, I got my saw, I got my wrench, I got whatever. I got flashlight. And I don't like to store the batteries in the flashlight just as a heads up because the batteries in the flashlight can corrode. So you take a dip in the drink for some reason, those batteries, you didn't seal it up, whatever. Uh, I like to store them separately in a little baggie. Speaking of little baggies, this is more of like a uh, rescue essentials kind of thing. So this is designed to be a get home kit. Remember, this is not designed to be a tactical loadout. So in here I have a compass, a signal mirror, a lock pick set, a fire starter, a candle, a small pry bar. So these are things that would essentially help me in the process of getting home, not necessarily in a loadout of training and or a gunfight. This is designed to help me as I traverse the miles getting home. I also have a Sharpie, mini Sharpie. Those are great for triage type things. Let me put this stuff back real quick. What I like is you run all the same stuff. You run it in the same spot every time. Make sure it goes back in the same spot. I literally have a spreadsheet of what's in my different plate carriers so that I know. Again, something to point out, this, I have it tucked in. I didn't take it off, but I did tuck in that thing. So I'm always still sticking with that same. Left to right is open. Oh, look at that, a buzzsaw. Got one of them too. All right, so we go down to the front here. So I got my energy snacks, uh, sriracha peanut butter, health food store, clutch, again, a little more energy. I got some quick clot combat gauze. I got some gloves and a face covering because you never know in that type of situation that you need a plate carrier to get home. You may not want your face in certain aspects of life. So just something to think about. These are again, mechanics gloves. These are built to more of a protective glove than they are a shooting glove. I'm sure you can shoot them. They have a bit, little bit thicker. They're obviously plastic knuckled. This is a protective glove. If I'm getting home, who knows what I may encounter? You guys have all seen The Walking Dead, right? Beginning scene where he's in the city by himself and he's busted cars, breaking in windows, whatever. This is that glove. This is a protective glove, but it's not a huge welding glove to protect my hands fully because then I would have zero dexterity. If you ever try to shoot a rifle in a welding glove, I mean, good luck trying to control the gun with the different safeties and stuff. Are those mechanics as well? Mm-hmm. Yep, so these are mechanics. Like I said, they're obviously more of a protective glove than they are a shooting glove. And uh, that's it in here. As I put this stuff away, I'll kind of get into the back. So I kind of mentioned earlier that I don't run pistol mags on my plate carriers. And there's a reason for that. My neural pathway does not say go to the plate carrier for pistol mags, but in the event that I do need this plate carrier, I would like to have extra pistol mags. So let me show you what I got popped up in here. So. This is the back panel. This is set up for grenades, which as a civilian, you could probably put smoke in here. I don't like smoke sitting in my car, just the heat. But let me get to what I do really like in here. Look at that. Two pistol mags, two fully loaded hollow point pistol mags for the gun I carry every day. This pistol mag pouch isn't the greatest, but it works for what I need it to work for. And I could just bury it in a plate carrier and not worry about it. It's a plastic one with belt loops. I wear a belt every single day. So I know that this pistol mat pouch can go on my belt and I'm good to go. So that, that neural pathway of a, a quick reload goes to the same place it always has. And I got two mags in here, plus the mag in my gun. And maybe I had another mag in my pocket that day, but I at least have three mags, at least. So that gives me enough pistol ammo that I can feel confident in what I'm doing. Some old school zip cuffs. This is not for taking hostages. This is not for kidnappings or something like that. It's for detaining. You don't want someone following you. You don't want someone going with you, whatever. That's kind of where that would be. Going back to the mags, 
these are 556 mags and they are loaded with 556 rounds these are actually some hornady tap i chose this for a reason i've stopped carrying my 300 blackout as much because i've kind of dedicated to other things i now have a 556 with me most of the time so i designed these mags to do that plus 300 blackout isn't really a good outside gun it's a good inside gun great cqb gun fantastic but if i want to reach out a little bit further i'm going to go 556. one thing i will mention this plate carrier unique about it as well as you'll see on shoulder pads whereas these i'm not again kind of going back to that mentality of like this is a get home i'm going to wear this for however long it takes me to get home be that a day three days whatever to carry that load is going to be a lot easier with some padding there where these are training this is at home you can take it off and on this is a training care it's not going to be for multiple days straight it kind of depends on what you're going to do normally i do not like running shoulder pads they get in the way they move they slide they poke me in the neck but for this application i think it's a really good idea are those level three plates as well brother or are those four no these are three a plates again to go to the rifle plates for me really takes a lot because i'm walking home the weight that this provides over this and the protection that this provides over this is not equal to me i would rather be light and fast if i'm trying to be mobile and honestly if you're going up against anyone like me and you're going to take a rifle round in the teeth before you even know they were there. Not only that, but I have seen these plates take rifle rounds. And unless you're doing rifle plates, face shield, groin protector, shoulder pads, all that stuff, realistically, I just, I just wanna run. I just wanna get home. I wanna be small, nimble. If I get shot with a high caliber rifle and he doesn't make it in my plate, I'm pretty much smoked anyways. If I get shot with a high caliber rifle in this plate, I'm pretty much smoked anyways if I'm on the go in that situation that you need a plate carrier to get home you take a rifle round to the plate where are you going after that you go to the hospital you going to see your buddy who knows medical stuff man you're getting knocked on your ass you probably have broken ribs you're gonna have internal bleeding who knows there could be lots of things going on um three and a wind mag may punch right through your level three plates you may need three plus whatever so to me like i said you make that decision based on your surroundings and what you want to do this is my decision for myself, pistol, pistol, rifle. So that's about it on these three plate carriers. I do have more. So if you guys want a part two, let Tyler know. I'll bring in some more different styles of plate carriers. I can even go in different directions and stuff like that. Let him know. Uh, but that's about it for right now on these three. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave a comment or hit up Tyler. He'll get a hold of me. When I'm out on the range, I can't always get there, but I will get back to you eventually. Um, other than that, here he comes. So again, Lee, just want to say thank you for going over your carriers. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to mention before we finish this up? Yeah, guys, honestly, these are my choices for kit. The biggest thing you can do about your kit and the way you set it up is run it. Get out and run it. I said I don't run this plate carrier very often, but I can guarantee you this Chester has been in the dirt. This plate carrier has been in the dirt. This has been run. I've literally done a skate track with this just to know what it feels like. You're going to find hot spots. You're going to find things that bug you. You're going to find, like I said, I don't like shoulder pads. And I learned that by use. I learned that by shouldering rifles with shoulder pads. Did not like it. So run your kit. That's when you're going to find what's good, what's bad, what you can change. Like I like this brand over that brand. That's because I've run it. I know how it works. I've run it and find out what works. That's a great point, man. Like you said, that's how you find out what works for you and what doesn't, what's comfortable and what's not. That's really important. Make sure to get out there and run your kit, run your gear and see what works and what doesn't. That's a great point. A great job, Lee. I really appreciate yeah. you coming out. And like you said, if you guys want a part two, shoot me a comment. This guy's got plenty of other plate carriers, plenty of other chest rigs, yeah. which also reminds me, we've done a chest rig video, a battle belt video and a bug out bag video. All three are on my channel. I'll post links below in the description for those. Yeah, what's interesting too is a lot of the chest rig stuff applies to this because this is a standalone chest rig, you know? So plate carriers and chest rigs, you can blend the two in certain aspects and how you set them up. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to shoot me a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today and thank you for watching.